In the last lesson, we created a bunch of these container views so that we can lay out the containing elements relative to the containers. But the problem is that we haven't given these containers any dimensions or positions of their own. We haven't specified how they themselves are going to be laid out, which is why if we add some constraints to the subviews or the things that are inside these containers, well, it's still ambiguous because it doesn't know how to lay out these containers. In order to solve this problem, we're going to learn about something called stack views. And a stack view is exactly the way it sounds. It's a way for us to be able to stack views together, either vertically, for example, in this case, our three views are vertically stacked on top of each other, or we could also create horizontal stacks, such as our two dice views. They're horizontally aligned with each other. If we take our top view and then hold down the command key and select the middle view and the bottom view, so we have all three selected, we can go ahead and embed them inside a stack view. So you can go to editor, embed in stack view, or we can simply just select this button and embed it into a stack view. Now that they are in a stack view, Xcode knows how to align these three things relative to each other. But we've still got some problems because while we know how these three should be placed relative to each other, namely in a sort of horizontal column, we don't actually know where the stack view begins and ends. So in addition to putting these views inside a stack view, we also have to give the stack view some constraints relative to its super view. But this is relatively easy because we want that stack to stretch out so that it takes up the entire screen and to make sure that it doesn't go into the safe areas. Think about what you did for the background in terms of setting its constraint. And as a challenge, I want you to add some constraints to the stack view to make these errors disappear. And the stack view should be constrained so that it doesn't go into any of the safe areas at the top or at the bottom. Pause the video and have a think about this problem and try to solve it. All right, so we've got our stack view selected and we're going to add some constraints. Now, in my case, I want it to be zero from all four sides. And instead of being relative to the super view, I want it to be relative to the safe areas. Now, notice how when we click on the drop down, we can select safe area in most of these drop downs other than the top one. Well, in my case, the reason is actually because this top part of the stack view has already gone past the safe area. You can see where the safe area is and you can see where my stack view ends. So if we bring it down just a little bit so that it's right next to the safe area, then if I try to add my constraints this time, you can see that the safe area now exists as a possible relationship. So let's go ahead and add these zero to all four sides, but notice how my bottom constraint is no longer showing the safe area. So let's go ahead and simply add this as a zero constraint to the containing view. And then we're going to add these four constraints and we can fine tune it using our attribute inspector. So if I go ahead and select the bottom of my stack view, so it should read stack view dot bottom. You can see that currently it's set relative to the super views bottom. So let's go ahead and change that to the safe area bottom and change that constant to a zero. And now if I hit enter, it'll be aligned relative to the bottom of the safe area. Now that we've constrained our stack view to all four sides, the next thing to do is to configure this stack. Now, notice when you drop three elements that are roughly vertically on top of each other inside a stack view, it'll automatically choose the vertical axis. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the distribution to fill equally because we want all three of these views that are contained in my stack to have equal heights along the vertical axis. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice some more errors will go away and it'll know how to lay out these three elements 
even if it's in a horizontal orientation. Notice how it's avoiding all of the safe areas. Meanwhile, it's dividing the height evenly between all three containers. So now that we've specified our stack, it makes it so much easier to align these other elements. So our roll button, for example, can now be horizontally and vertically aligned in its container, which is of course now the bottom view rather than this one. So let's go ahead and add those two constraints and it gets put in the middle. Now, as a challenge, I want you to put these two dice views in a horizontal container so that they are equally aligned to each other horizontally. So pause the video and try to complete that challenge. Okay, so as we did before, we select these two things and then we go ahead and embed them in a stack view. And because they're roughly next to each other on the horizontal axis, they automatically get placed in a horizontal uh, stack view. And now we can select our stack and make it centered in the middle container. You can also adjust the spacing between the elements in the stacks. So for example, our vertical stack, if you wanted to have more spacing, say let's change it to 30, then you could have these elements spaced further apart. But in our case, I actually want the spacing to be minimal, just enough so we can actually see the edges of each of the containers, but I don't want them to have a lot of distance away from each other so that when we go into the horizontal, there's enough space to go around. Now for our horizontal stack, I'm gonna change the spacing to about 50 to keep them a little bit closer together. And once you're done with using these containers, because we're only using them for layout, we don't actually want it to look like this in our final app, we can go ahead and select these container views and change the background to default or see-through. And now they're there for layout, but they're no longer obscuring our background. Now, the final thing I wanna show you is notice how our roll button has been collapsed so that it's very small and fits precisely the size of the text that's inside. And this is because we've added alignment, so center horizontally and vertically in its container, but we haven't specified any sort of size constraints. So by default, it resizes itself to fit its content. So that means that if I had a little bit more text in here, then it will actually make it larger. But if we wanted a little bit of space around the text, then we would actually have to add our own width constraint. So we can specify a custom width and even a custom height if we so wish. So I'm gonna change the width to 100 and the height to 50. And now I'm gonna add my constraints. But notice that as soon as I added the width constraint, I get a warning here. And the warning tells me that there's a problem with auto layout because I have a fixed width constraint. And if we go over here, you can see that it tells us this problem in a little bit more detail. The width is set to always be 100. But what if we had more text in there? What if we had a longer uh, piece of text that was being rendered? Well, then it will clip the text, right? It won't show the entire line. So this is what it's trying to warn us about. And there's a couple of ways of fixing this. So if we click on this triangle, you can see we can either remove the constraint, which will resize our label to the size of the content, or we can set the constraint, the width being 100, to being greater than 100. So this allows the label to extend if there's more text, or we can set it to greater than the minimum width. So to make sure the button doesn't shrink below the minimum size. So I'm gonna select this one and click confirm. And now it's going to say that it should always be greater or equal to 100. So it means that if I didn't have a lot of text in here, let's return it back to our previous uh, roll text, then it's going to make it 100. But if we had more text in there, then it's gonna resize it to fit the text which is exactly what we want. So now we've learned about constraints, 
namely alignment and pinning constraints, as well as stack views, vertical and horizontal stacks, and also these modifiers such as the greater than or equal or less than or equal. And I think you're ready for a challenge. Head over to the next lesson where we've got a challenge for you to test your understanding of auto layout. And you're going to apply all of these things to a new app and see how well you've understood what we've talked about. Have fun on the challenge and I'll see you on the next module.